Hey there, Caliente family. You know me, my name is Matt Monner. I'm the beverage director here at Caliente. And I'm with Bob Garrett. He uh, is rep representing Fat Heads today. We wanted to talk to you about the second half of our February Brewery Month promotion, which is uh, Strange Magic. Uh, Bob, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, my name's Bob. I'm the uh, regional sales manager for Fat Heads. And I'm very excited to uh, have an opportunity to be a part of the Brewery of the Month program here at Caliente. And uh, for the second half, we'll be featuring our Strange Magic. It is uh, one of our newest full-time IPAs. Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, with the success of Headhunter, want to create something else? Well, I will uh, be the first to tell you I absolutely love Headhunter. It's Strange Magic is amazing. Great beer, very approachable. It's 6.5% and uh, 65 IBU. And uh, the reason I say it's very approachable, uh, it has tons of hop flavor, but the Headhunter at 7.5%, if you drink three or four of those, you'll be, uh, I, I dub them head herders. Um, but uh, so drinking uh, three or four strange magic, strange magics are a lot easier. So you'll see uh, the beautiful uh, pale golden color. And uh, just popping that open, I can just get all that great hop aroma through my mask. Here. So we've gotten into a little bit of the statistics of the beer. Uh, you know, what we need to talk about is the flavor, the aroma. You know, what do you taste? What do you smell when you take a drink of it? You get a lot of good citrusy flavors. Uh, that lends itself to uh, the hops that we use. We use a lot of Citra, Mosaic, Warrior, and uh, Simcoe. And it, it is, it's very approachable. It's, it's less aggressive than our Headhunter, and that's why I think it's very drinkable. But it'll have a much broader audience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of flavor in there, not a lot of bitterness. I mean, it's got the perfect amount of bitterness to to uh, to complement the body of it. It's not light by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not heavy. It's just uh, kind of perfectly crafted. The bitterness and the, the flavor and the aroma just are really, really great together. Um, I love the flavors, as you mentioned. I love that kind of like, um, like kind of tropical fruity uh, basis it's got there, but then you get the citrus. You do get a little touch of pine, and it's just, you know, I'm excited to have some food with this. Um, but first, I want to actually talk a little bit about Fatheads uh, in Caliente. You know, um, you and I have known each other for, for years in our various previous lives, and, uh, you know, Caliente has done a lot with Fatheads in the past. I mean, Fatheads, to me, is kind of like a local brewery. It's not, it's not local, being uh, located in... Uh, East Olmsted or West Olmsted? North Olmsted. North Olmsted. <laughs> North Olmsted. Well, that's, that's our original pub. Uh, now all of our beer is brewed at our production facility in Middleburg Heights. Okay, okay, nice. But I mean, everybody here knows, I mean, Fatheads was like, the bar was the original craft beer bar in Pittsburgh in the South Side. Uh, it's been around longer than I've been in the scene for sure. So you know, I'm really excited to try this with some food. First of all, I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, just our past, uh, Calientes and Fatheads. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of promotions in the past. Unfortunately, these days we can't really do events. But you know, we've worked together in the past, and we've done a lot of a lot of brewery months, a lot of standalone events. Um, Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week. Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that great with the ice cream. Yes. Yeah, like the, a couple of years ago. That one was uh, that one was the best. So I'm looking forward to the day where we can actually. We can actually do something like that again, but Absolutely. what I kind of want to uh, mention right now is we're going to do a tasting with some of our Lent menu, and we think that the strange magic, the uh, you know the, the whole Mardi Gras theme, um, is going to go great with our with our Lent menu. Um, so I guess without further ado, let's uh, let's get the food. Speaking of strange magic, where did this food come from? I have no idea, but this <laughs> all looks amazing. Oh man, I can't. This is like my favorite part of the day right now. So, uh, these are all items from our Lent menu. We have our fish and shrimp, shrimp platter. Uh, it comes with some fries. It also comes with a side of ketchup and tartar sauce. We have Boo Boo Shrimp, which is uh, our take on Yum Yum Sauce. It's got kind of a you know, spiciness. I'm going to let you try those and talk about it. We have our hot pepper cheese balls, which are probably my uh, second favorite thing on the menu. And it comes with our black and gold sauce, which is uh, is mustard based. Uh, it's Caroline barbecue. Um, and then we've got our hush puppies. I mean, who doesn't love hush puppies? So 
Uh, well, yeah, what we're going to do here, Bob, we're going to dig into this food. We're going to talk about how well it pairs with the Strange Magic. And uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up. Let's eat. <laughs> great. I don't know if you knew this, but hot pepper cheese balls are one of my favorite things on the planet. Did not know that, but you're in for a treat. These are some of the best ones you can find. That was really good. What do you think about the Carolina barbecue? We make that in house here. I was going to say, I'm usually not a Carolina barbecue fan, but going with those pepper jack, that is amazing. It's really good. Nice. And also, uh, also is available on wings. Awesome. So the hot spot piece here, I want to talk a little bit about. It actually comes with our Cal Cal Caliente Remoulade, which has that kind of um, yeah, a little sweetness, a little tanginess. But I can tell you, the way that it pairs with the citru citrusy aspect of this beer um, is, I mean, it's perfect. Perfect is kind of an understatement. Then you also have the body of this beer, which I mentioned earlier. It's not light, but it's not heavy. Uh, and kind of the breadiness of this, it just, it, 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 it kind of, I don't know, say cuts right through it. It, it, it. it balances it really, really well. And I, you know, I don't know, it's fantastic. And I love this beer with the uh, hot pepper cheese balls because it just really pulls that heat out and that's why I'm eating the hot pepper cheese ball. And the hops really just accentuate that flavor. Which is, well, I'm going to be digging into those boom boom shrimp here shortly. Yeah man, well have at it. Let me know what you think. And I got a cheese ball while you're, while you're assessing that. Oh wow. You might not be getting any of these, man. <laughs> that, that's alright. I can have them anytime. Yeah, I see what you're saying, the sweetness, the tanginess of this Carolina barbecue, the black and gold sauce, it really, really, the spiciness of the cheese balls, the pepper jack cheese, really like, uh, really goes well. This is actually probably my favorite pairing on the table here. So what do you think about the, you like the... It's really good, again, it, the, the hops really bring out the heat, but uh, just that, the tropical citrus really goes nice with that sweeter sauce too. So it's a good sweet heat. Nice, good, yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. I'm gonna have myself another pressure puppy. Just in general here, you were talking about how this is gonna go, well, just fried food in general. So there's a whole plate of fried food right there, which, I mean, we don't have to get into right now if you don't want to, but I mean, if you wanna just talk a little bit about how fried food pairs with that beer, let everybody know. Yeah, IPAs just really just cleanse the palate. So, you know, the grease, from the fried fish and the french fries. It just is a really nice compliment. Makes you want to have another bite and then another sip and then repeat. Look, more magic. We have the napkins now, imagine that. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, Lent menu here is uh, gonna coincide with uh, Strange Magic. You know, check it out. We think it's gonna pair well, but you know, enough with the food, Bob. I want to talk to you about how did you get sort of fast? I mean, you've been in this industry like a really long time. How did you, <laughs> how'd you get, uh, well, I mean, like me, I wasn't, you know, but uh, yeah, what, what, how'd you get sort of fast? What's your story? Well, I was uh, been selling beer now for over 15 years and uh, all been in Western Pennsylvania based and naturally uh, one of the main spots that you would go to is Bad It's Loom in the South Side. So, got to know the ownership and the management team there and uh, counted them for quite a few years to say, hey, once they started brewing beer about 12 years ago, I was like, hey, when are you going to hire me? When can I sell your beer? You know? and so finally, I guess I wore them down and they, uh, whenever the position opened up here in Pittsburgh, they uh, gave me a call and uh, the timing was perfect. I had a little one on the way and I was just going to be uh, focused right here in Pittsburgh so it wasn't traveling like some of my uh, prior lives. So, uh, it just made sense. And not to mention, I mean, Truly love the beers. Uh, Headhunter is, you know, like uh, one of my favorite IPAs on the planet, uh, if not my favorite IPA. And so that's it was a natural, natural fit for me. Nice. That's oddly echoes the way I think Caliente, honestly. Uh, somewhat of serendipity, but also I'd been a fan. Uh, I'd been a fan for quite a while, and decided I wanted to work here, and um, you know, kind of the rest is history. Um, what I yeah, what I wanted to ask you about next is just kind of talk about maybe big picture. You know, talk about fat heads, like you know, what's in the future, what's important, what's going on. I mean, what 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 are the plans? Uh, yeah, very open ended. I mean, yeah, I no, 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 that's great. Uh, actually, a uh, lot going on this year. Uh, you'll see a lot of our beers coming out in 16 ounce cans. Nice. Uh, due to the pandemic, um, ah. and also we're uh, opening up some new markets. We're going to be opening up Kentucky later this month, oh, that's and awesome. then uh, we'll finally fill up Pennsylvania uh, the beginning of March. So we weren't in the Williams, uh, Williamsport, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area, but that will all change uh, March 1st. 
Nice. Wait, right, how many states are you going to be in now? That will be, we're in Indiana, we'll be in Kentucky, Ohio, all of Pennsylvania, and we dabble in uh, Western New York. Nice, that's awesome. Well, it's good to hear things are looking up. I know it's been frustrating the past, uh, you know, nearly a year now. So it's good to see that uh, you mentioned the pandemic. You know, for a while there, I know we were afraid we weren't going to be able to get cans. There was an aluminum can shortage, honestly, for quite a few months. So um, I guess that's not a problem anymore. You're able to source them. And it's still a problem. We just have to be creative on yeah. what we do. Uh, as you'll see, uh, the first half of uh, the Brewery Month feature, we have Bumbleberry, which are in bottles. Uh, that's a beer that translates okay to bottles. We're trying to keep all of our IPAs in cans. Uh, just, it's much better for the beer, uh, mm -hmm. the cans, less headspace, you know, uh, no light can get in. Um, and just, we find that our IPAs, the hop profile just really holds up so much better in a can. So we're trying to do everything we can do ah. to keep our IPAs in cans. Uh, so Bumble, uh, you know, that's an easy one. We already had bottles for it. Um, other beers that we try to put in a 12 ounce, uh, we have to make a shift and do 16 ounce cans. So you'll see our Groovy Juice, which is our uh, brand new year round AZ IPA. That'll be in 16 ounce uh, four packs. Our uh, latest um, seasonal that just came out, our special operations. Uh, that's also a AZ a -A IPA that we uh, collaborated with Breakside Brewery out of Oregon. Okay. So that'll be in 16 ounce four packs. Benjamin Danklin, which traditionally was in 12 ounce, will be 16 ounce. And then we have two brand new uh, seasonal IPAs going to be in 16 ounce cans coming up quarter three and quarter four. Wow. So tons of stuff going on. Yeah, I guess keep an eye on our draft list and our coolers for all of that. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. I know the special operations uh, that you guys did, um, yeah, that went over really, really super well here. I was really, really kind of do a little bit of uh, talking, I think, to get that one. It was so limited, but uh, we got it on our, uh, I mean, all of you out there in Caliente land uh, really loved that one. Well, Bob, I mean, I appreciate your coming today. I appreciate you bringing this fantastic beer. Uh, you know, you're invited back anytime. I'm looking forward to doing stuff in the future with you. Um, you know, I'm going to let you take some of this food with you because I, I'd love to, but I can't eat it all. I appreciate um, that. So, yeah, I mean, do you have any parting words for our, our friends out there? I just uh, really appreciate you, you giving us an opportunity to showcase some of our beers and to pair our uh, delicious beers with your fantastic food. Well, Thanks, we appreciate the compliment likewise. I mean, this has been great. All right, cheers. Cheers, and uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like it, or like and subscribe, it's somewhere up there, or over there, or somewhere. Yeah, look out, it's gonna magically appear.